a little bit more specifics of what does it look like to actually run Jetscape. Um, so, in a broad sense, um, there are there are three three main steps, uh, which we hope you'll find quite simple. So, the first is to install and build Jetscape, which uh, I think actually all of you have done uh, if you have followed the, the prep instructions already. And then the second step is you need to create a configuration file. You need to tell Jetscape. Uh, which modules you want to run out of the available modules and which parameters to configure those modules with. Um, and so this we do with, um, with uh, XML files, which uh, I'll, we'll see quite some, some detail of today. Um, and then finally, once you have provided a configuration file, you simply can execute um, this uh, thing called run Jetscape, which you pass this your name of the configuration file and you will be up and running and generating Jetscape events. So to, to just briefly take each of those steps uh, in slightly more detail, um, first installation. So there is um, documentation on the GitHub page, um, which I recommend uh, everybody to take a look at if you haven't yet. Um, and there, there are basically two different ways you can install Jetscape. You can install Jetscape using Docker. And so this, this is what we've required for the school. Um, it, it requires uh, uh, basically everybody to have a uniform software environment, uh, which has a lot of advantages. And um, as long as you have Docker installed, once you have Docker installed, this, this makes it very, very simple to build Jetscape. Um, there is, however, I, I want to point out, you, you can certainly still install Jetscape in what we call a manual way. Um, and so there, there are instructions linked on this GitHub to do this. Um, uh, this means there is basically a list of software packages which Jetscape depends on, which you need to install yourself. Um, so this, this is a bit more work uh, often, but um, but may still be of interest to, to people who, who prefer uh, that manual option. And I mentioned that there are some external packages uh, within Jetscape. And um, actually when one is building Jetscape, there are certain options that you need to enable if you want to use those external packages. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get into this also um, eventually in the hands-on session. Um, but there are some CMake options. So when you run the CMake command, you you need to explicitly enable um, these external packages that you uh, that you have downloaded if you want to compile those and be able to run those in Jetscape. Now I, I mentioned that um, that there is Docker support. So um, in, in the hands-on session, I hope we will, we will try to orient ourselves and get, get a bit more comfortable with Docker for those who aren't. Um, but the, the basic idea, um, which I hope you've seen from the prep instructions, is that once you download Docker, basically with one line of code, you can create a, a complete software environment, which contains all of the prerequisites that you need for, uh, in order to run Jetscape. Um, and th this, uh, this simplifies uh, your life uh, in many cases and um, allows also on the technical side um, the, the running of Jetscape to be very reproducible and to simplify troubleshooting and bug fixing and whatnot. Um, so as mentioned for the school, we really require that um, you're running Jetscape in, uh, in this Docker mode. Um, there, most things should still work for anybody if anybody has uh, decided to do the manual installation, but some things will not actually work in the school. Um, and, and just due to the size of things, we won't be able to support much um, uh, that. Uh, so we hope, we hope you will find Docker um, useful. 